guys, it's Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a great one today. We're gonna learn how to play Baba O'Reilly by The Who. So this one's got just some, the main part of it's just, the main riff is just three simple chords, but man, do they rock. <laughs> This has such a cool vibe to this song, and that is a sign of a truly great songwriter who can do that. Anyway, so we're going to cover this song. We're going to do not only that riff, but all the guitar riffs. Plus, we're going to take a look at Pete Townsend's main solo and that little interlude section. That... So we're going to do all of that as well. So before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. Uh, and, you know, comment, like on the videos. That helps me out and stuff. Um, and... If you really want to help out the channel and everything I do with all these song lessons here on the channel, join my Guitar Academy. That is the best way to support what I do here. And as an added bonus, you get access to all of my guitar courses uh, covering everything from, uh, you know, complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory. Um, we got a complete guitar tone course over there. Uh, many different styles so please go check it out and if you use that link in the description you'll get a free seven day trial to kind of see if it works for you or anything and like i said it will be supporting everything i do here on youtube even if all you do is watch the song listens here on youtube all right so let's jump into this song now i am tuned uh to standard tuning and i have a capo some people call it a capo capo whatever depending on where you're what part of the planet you're on uh but that uh I'm not a huge capo fan either, but this is how Pete Townsend plays it. And it does give it kind of a... Kind of a... The strings do resonate a little bit differently since you, you're, you can kind of play it almost like open chords now. So it does make a tonal difference, and I'm sure that's why he's using it. You can really get these nice big open chords. All right, so you want to put that at the uh, first fret, uh, whatever you call this thing. Just put it at the first fret. All right, we're going to start with this main riff here. So it's very simple. Um, you, you're going to start with just a really a power chord. Now, this is an F power chord because of the, the capo. So I'm just playing. We have the capo holding the, you know, at the first fret, and then um, two frets in front of the capo on the A string and the D string. So you get the low E string in there, and then... All right, now we're going to come over here, and we're going to play this C major chord. So... Now, you can play it as a C power chord if you want, or full major chord. Um, but like I said, this is played by piano in the beginning, but uh, we have the first, the, I'm sorry, that third fret there, and then you're gonna bar the fifth fret across the D, G, and the B. And then you go to what would feel like just an A major chord. But obviously, since we got a capo here, it's a B-flat major chord. So it's that open A string, and in front of the capo, two frets in front of the capo, I'm holding the D, G, and the B string. So we have this. And just repeat that. Such a cool verse to this song. Anyway, um, and, and incredibly difficult to sing. So we kind of do that for a while. Um, and then we have this little bridge section uh, where Pete, Pete Townsend sings. But that begins first with... So basically it's that C chord, but you're going to put the fifth in the bass as well. So instead of just the third fret on the A, you're going to add the third fret on the low E with it. And then the rest of the chorus. Kind of just hit it like three times. And then he comes in with that. Don't cry. So we've got that section there. So it's, but there's really kind of no chords going on when he's doing the actual singing. So you just start out with that C with the G in the bass. Hit three times. And then we go back into that same verse riff again. All right. So now we've. So nothing new there, that, that second verse. Then we get to the guitar solo. So let me play through Pete Townsend. I'm going to switch to the neck pickup here. I'm going to play through Pete Townsend's solo real quick. Um, and I'll show you how to play it phrase by phrase. So here, here we go. All 
All right, so we're going to start. We're here with the uh, 13th fret on the high E string. Then pick that again. Then over to the 13th fret on the B string. And then hammer the, the, onto the 15th, from 13 to 15. And then pick that 15 a couple more times. So we hit this first phrase. So the next phrase is this. So we have um, just 13, 15, 13 on the high E string. Uh, then a quick bend at the 15th fret on the high E. Then back down, you can play the 13th fret twice on the high E. Then over to 15, 13 on the B string. And then go, which is just 15, 13, a couple times. So, so far in this solo, we have this. All right, now we're going to end the solo like this. Now, we have this, so that's a, starting with a bend. So it's a, a series of bends at the 15th fret. You know, the whole step bends there. At the 15th fret on the G string. And then pick it now, release. And then over to the uh, 15th fret on the D string. Then you go up to a series and do it a, uh, a few more bends. Uh, the, so we just do it like kind of three. Like three of them, and then pick 15 without the bend twice. So we have this. And then we have this. So that's a kind of a half step bend and release in the 14th fret on the G. Then 15 on the D, 15 on the A. Then you're gonna hammer, at the end of the solo here, we're gonna hammer 13, the vocals are coming in here, so it's kinda hard to, you know, maybe hear all this, but it's a, it's a hammering 13 to 15 on the A, and then back to 13, so we get this. Then do that again, hammer 13 to 15. And then end it with 13 on the low E now instead of the A. So we have this. So all together for that solo. So after the solo, we go back to that same, it's kind of a variation. This is really the chorus where they're saying that Teenage Wasteland. Why well, everybody thinks the song is called Teenage Wasteland. But so it's it's similar to the verse, but just slightly different. So it looks like this. Teenage So that's getting into the interlude section. So it's the same thing that we did earlier. You so just instead of holding that A, or 
oh, sorry, holding that B flat. Um, you go back up to the previous chord again to transit before you transition back to the first chord. So it's just the same three chords. You have the, the F power chord, the C, the B flat, and then go back to the C before you go back to the F. So it's just another compositional technique that Pete Townsend using is just to kind of push the energy, kind of the dynamic level of the song along. So now we get to the chorus, how we kind of differentiates it, differentiate, or what is that? Is that even a word? I can I can't say that kind of word. Anyway, so you got a little bit more movement going on by just going back up to that top chord. Before you start up. All right, so now we get to the interlude section. So. Um, once again, a lot of the same chords. There's an additional E5, um, E flat uh, power chord thrown in here. But uh, I'm going to play through the chords first. So we start with these like dun, 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 dun. And then that little guitar line comes in over it. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. But first, we're going to do the chords underneath it. So we're going to start with these kind of chord stabs that come out of the chorus there. So we have this. So that's going to start with just that C chord played twice, kind of mute it, just kind of kill it after each one, and then uh, the B flat. So the, we've seen those chords before. So that kind of leads us in, and now we just play a lot of the same chords we did before with that added E flat chord, but now you're going to let them ring. So you just hit the C chord first, let it ring, then the B flat, and then we're going to play a full F major chord, so not just the F power chord. You're gonna play, um, so just play it like a regular E major chord that you, you probably already know, just in front of the capo, so it makes it an F major chord. So this. Now here, a new chord here, and you will see him play it live, he usually plays it here. So it's an E flat power chord. I don't really, I don't hear him getting the, the third in there. It's making it a full major chord. So it's an open D string, and then two frets in front of the capo on the G, three frets in front of the capo on the B. So this those three strings. You can hit that open A string in there maybe if you want it. Make it sound a little bit bigger. So we have this C, C major, B flat for the F to the E flat. Now repeat those again. C, B flat, to F, to the E flat again. And now we're going to end this section by just going playing F twice in a row. And then that E flat chord and just let that ring. And that takes them to the, the outro section there, which I'll talk about. It's really just a one chord vamp that's going on the entire time there. All right, so now let's take a look at the little melodic line, little guitar solo that's going on over that section. So it looks like this. Once again, switch into the neck pickup. <laughs> So that's going to start out here. Um, you know, it sounds like there's a little slapback delay that's kind of 
the the level of it's pretty low though um but you can still see here kind of see and there's like a little interplay going with uh, the their little synth patch or organ patch whatever's going on there but um so the guitar though you can kind of recreate like this so we have this so we just got this little first the staccato pattern so i'm playing 12 13 15 there on the high e so you repeat that one two and i'm killing each note each time so we have this And then we do a, we go through them a little bit quicker. So that's the, the pattern that he does for a bit. So we have this. Now the chords are changing on underneath this. So that's what kind of makes it, you know, give this kind of a little cool quality about it. That's not so repetitive. So we have this, we basically repeat it that way for um, three times though. So we have. So it's that same, just that pattern is you're playing through it twice slow with the staccato kill in the note each time, and then you play through it the, the three notes quicker, just one time. And then that's the pattern, and then you just repeat that. And then you repeat it again. Now when we get to the E flat chord in the chord progression underneath, you're going to change these three notes. It's going to be the same pattern, but we're going to change this note that's at the 12th fret. You're going to move it down to 11. So the other two notes stay at the 13 and 15. And so it's the same. So just like that. So we have this. All right. And then from there, we have this. Kind of speeds up a little bit. So that's the first one. So we're just basically going between 12 and 13 on the high E string a few times. You basically do it seven times between those two notes. Five, six, seven. And then on the eighth time through, you instead of going, you still start with the 12 on the high E, but you go instead of 13 on the high E, 13 on the B. So we have this. Now the second one is a little bit more complex. It looks like this. So that's going the same between 12 and 13 a little bit. But then we go up to 15, then 12, and then hit 13 twice. So we have this. Now we have this next section. So that's going to be 12, 13 on the high E. I'm playing it like this because then it moves over to the 13th fret on the high E. And then back to that. Then back to the 13 on the, on the high E. So it's better. I don't have to roll if I play it like that. And then I go, I go back to that 13th fret on the B string, and then we go up to 13 on the high E. I'm going to move up here and play with my index finger. So then after I play that, I'm just going to go 15, 15, 13 a few times. It gets a lot easier. So wait this. So coming out of those previous notes, we have this. Kind of change the fingers around there. Just like that. One more time, a little bit slower.
Now from there, we go back down and get a little bit easier. We just go down to 11 and play 11, 13 a little bit. And that's the end of kind of that repeated little note section. So all together. From there, we have this. All right, so um, so coming out of there, uh, it does a bend and release at the 16th fret on the B string, over to 13 on the B. And then a few bends here um, at the 15th fret on the G string again, like we did in the first solo. Hold that bend and then do some kind of tremolo picking on it while you start to slowly uh, release the bend. So. And then from there we have this. So that's it. Little bend and release there at the 14 on the G string. Then play 15 on the D, 13, 12 on the D. Then 13, 12 on the A. Then 13, 11 on the low E. And then these two last notes here play a little bit quicker. This 10 and 8. And it starts sliding down to the open string, low E, so open. So that's it for the uh, solo, and then out of that, it just kind of goes into like an F5, F5 vamp, where he, he likes some of the... Alive, he's just kind of playing the F power chord up here, so we have the low string open, which is the F string right now because of the capo. Eighth fret on the A, tenth on the D, tenth on the G, open B, and high E strings there. Kind of just goes at that. I think Roger Daltrey plays it as like a harmonica solo live and stuff. All right, so that's about it for Bob O'Reilly. It's just a, not the most complex song in the world, but incredibly inventive um, and has to just really cool guitar, you know, licks in it. It's cool solos. Um, and just that opening riff is just, you could play this all day. It just has such a, a great vibe about it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.